Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So I caved and I picked up a couple of items from the Chanel Le Beige collection for summer 2021. So I'm a Chanel noob. So if you want to get the opinions from somebody who is new to the brand, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And slowly but surely, I've been dipping into Chanel makeup just because I love the compacts and most of the time, I think their collections are absolutely stunning. So they recently launched the Le Beige Summer of Glow collection and I didn't pick up everything from the collection. As you know, Chanel is not the cheapest brand. While I'm still getting to know the brand, I want to be picky about what I pick up. So some of the key pieces that I did not pick up from this launch, they actually launched their bronzing cream in a, a deeper shade. I still have the OG original formula before they changed it. I have not yet tried the new formulation, but it's really great that they did come out with a deeper shade. There are other videos covering this deeper bronzing cream. I did not pick it up because there's no way it was going to work on me anyways and I'm very happy with the one that I do have right now. So I did pass on that but that one is definitely awesome because they've never had a deeper shade of their bronzing cream. So I know a lot of you are really excited about that. I am as well. There also seems to be a healthy glow illuminating powder. This was not on the website when I first initially purchased from the launch but very cool. They also launched some nail polishes, and then there's also four Rouge Coco Flashes. We'll get into that. I picked up one shade, and then lastly, there is two Healthy Glow Natural Eyeshadow Palettes, which I picked both up. So today I'm going to be covering both of the eyeshadow palettes that came out and also one of the Coco Rouge Flash lipsticks. A lot of you guys seem interested in me covering this collection and a couple of you commented that you'd love to hear my thoughts on this as somebody who has never tried the eyeshadow formula and a few of the other items as well. So as I get acquainted with the brand, I thought I would take you along with me. There were two eyeshadow palettes. They are quints that came out and let's start off with the packaging. I did pick both up. So these are the Le Beige Healthy Glow Natural Eyeshadow Palettes. The boxes they came in are so pretty, just so simplistic, and it looks like this. And the two shades that they came out with were Intense and Tender. We'll start off with a look at Tender here. The packaging of the compacts are the same. Oh my gosh, very classic, beautiful Chanel. These are made in France with an 18 month shelf life. So as we open it up, they do come in a sleeve, by the way, I just took that out. As you open it up, you have this almost neutral pinky toned palette right here. I'm gonna show you the shade Intense now, which looks like this, and then you open it up, and this one has more greeny, earthy tones. So these are the two. You can see there are still more neutral color stories, which I expect Chanel to kind of be. They aren't known for vibrancy. All right, I am going to take you in as close as I can, and we're gonna do one eyeshadow palette on each eye. I have primed my eye with just a little bit of the Kylie Cosmetics concealer. This is on sale right now. I really like this concealer. Random. Expectation wise, I'm not expecting these eyeshadows to have a lot of pigment. Typically luxury eyeshadows, it's not about the opacity of the shade, it's about the finish of the shade. Normally something more wearable and I have swatched these and I can definitely tell. We don't have a lot of opacity, which is fine. It matters how they apply. So both of these eyeshadow quints are $65. They are not cheap for the amount of product that you are getting. So taking a look at the finishes of the pan, we have what looks like two of like a satin matte. So they're not completely flat, which is very, very flattering for more mature eyelids. That's going to be this guy and this guy right here. This one is more of a true satin, not quite as matte as the two that I just pointed out. Then we have this shade right here, which is a shimmer. And then this shade right here, which is going to have a little bit more of a glittery finish. You'll see that's the second shade down. So you can see even on my hand. These are the two satin mattes. The one shade that has a little bit more of a satin finish. Then we have the shimmer and the glitter shade. So we are going to start off with this shade down here. These shades do have a little bit of kickback. From what I've heard from the feedback from you guys, I've been told that this formula is a little bit better than the formula that you're used to from Chanel. I cannot speak on that. But this shade had a little bit more pigment than I was expecting. I'm not gonna lie. Really blends out with ease. 
does have a little bit of kickback. Very, very pretty. I like that. Now we're gonna go in, of course, with the deeper shade right here. And you can definitely see these are not a drier matte formula. They do have a satin matte finish. Again, leaving eyelids looking less dry if you have a more mature eyelid. And as you can see, that pretty much blended itself. It doesn't have a ton of depth to it. It definitely added depth to the look, but I can agree that it definitely blended itself out, which is quite impressive. Always something I look for. Yeah, two days ago was my birthday. I didn't tell you guys because I'm weird about birthday. May 14th for whatever date this video is going up, and I used an eyeshadow palette that was not a luxury or super high quality brand, and it took me a while to blend out the crease shades, and I was reminded why I love a good luxury palette because there's something about luxury and high-end makeup typically that works itself out. It kind of morphed into one shade, but very beautiful. I'm gonna go in with the lighter shade that we used first on the lower lash line, doing a pretty simple look, and now we'll go in with the deeper shade. Next up, we are going to take just a little bit of the satin shade right here. We're gonna use this as an underbrow highlight. Very subtle, kind of a nondescript shadow, but it like completes the look. You know, there's a place for it and we're just gonna put some right here. This would actually be very pretty all over the lid and on the lid, it doesn't have as much of that satin finish that I pointed out on my hand. It actually has more of a satin matte finish. I'm gonna clean that brush off and I wanna try out the satin shade right here, which pulls a little bit more pink by swatch. It looks almost a little bit more champagne-y in the pan, but by swatch, you can see it's pinker. Ooh, that's really, really gorgeous. I'm just gonna put this all over the lid. Subtle, nothing too crazy, of course. Very easy to use. Okay, lastly, we're gonna take a little bit of this shade. This shade was a little bit more crumbly on swatch. Like, I feel like I really had to press it in. We're gonna try it first with a brush. I just kinda wanna press this on top. And while it's adding, the shimmer dimension, it's not really doing much. I'm gonna try with my finger. Much better with a finger. Hopefully it doesn't fall all over my face. I mean, that's the look. We're gonna leave it at this very simple. And as I had expected, obviously it's not pigment pat. It's nothing like a Natasha Denona or a Pat McGrath formula, which is completely fine. Just be aware if you do prefer those really pigmented, shimmery, metallic shades, you're not gonna get that with this. This is a kind of formula that I feel like is very, very flattering for mature lids and also for people who just want a quick, everyday, thoughtless look because the colors are going to blend seamlessly together and it's gonna create a look that's gonna take you less than five minutes to do. And of course, you're also paying for the experience, of course, and the name. And my mom actually got me these earrings from Etsy, I believe. I'll see if I can link the shop down below. They're so cute, perfect for this video. But yeah, if you're looking for a great everyday eyeshadow, you like the kind of Chanel spiciness to it, this one's pretty. I'm not in love with it though. I don't think for me personally and for my makeup preferences, it would be worth $65. So let's move on to the other shade. Again, reapplying some of that base. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next one, which is the shade Intense. And this one is a little bit more earthy toned, really excited about these. Now what I've noticed about this particular launch from the eyeshadows, is it's hard to tell in pan almost what the finish is going to be. Taking a look at my arm swatches, it really is only one kind of satin matte, and this is going to be this deeper shade right here, which is completely fine, but you can see even in the pan, it does give you a little bit of Vavoom. This shade seems to be a little bit more of a looser, sheer kind of shimmer shade. This shade right here is going to carry a little bit more pigment and metallicness. This shade is a little bit more shimmery. And then this shade is more of like a satin shimmer hybrid. So this one has different finishes than the first palette. And all of them are kind of a hybrid shade. It's almost hard to distinguish what exact kind of finish it has. I think you're overall going to get a subtle shimmery kind of look with this. So let's find out. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here and we're gonna use this as a crease color. Again, I'm not gonna do anything fancy with the look just because I'm not familiar with the formula. So I want to do the typical kind of skill that I would do just to see how they perform. I mean, I don't know if you saw that. Very, very pigmented. I lightly tapped in the pan, but effortlessly works its way out. I'm gonna carry just a little bit more right here. Okay, that was completely effortless, wow. We're gonna go in with this deeper shade right here, the one that's kind of more of a satin matte. That's a very, very deep green to it. And again, effortlessly worked its way out. Can be quite pigmented, but it almost fades away as you blend it. So it built up really deep 
when I set it down and then when I blended it, it still kept some of that depth, but it's not as deep. But again, an effortless blend. A lot of times shades that do have that type of depth can be a little bit tough to work with and work out. I'm going in with the lighter crease shade that I just used. I guess we're going smoky today, I don't know. And I'm gonna go back in with that deep, deep green shade. As much as I want to use every shade, I want to put a deep shade all over the lid. I think we're gonna go this shade right here, which is like a chocolate shimmery brown, a little bit of golden in there. And this is going to create a really pretty effortless smoky eye. How gorgeous is that? And you can see a little bit of that gold shift in there. Kind of pack on a little bit more with our brush. Funny, I'm using a $65 Chanel palette with a $1 elf brush. <laughs> okay, let's use this shade right here now. We're gonna brighten up that inner corner just like that. And this one doesn't layer as well over that first shade. You can see it did add some nice brightness there. And lastly, before I kind of clean everything up, we're gonna take some of this shade. This is the one that's a little bit looser, similar to that of the shimmery shade in the Pinker palette, but it does have a little bit less glitters. Not quite as much, and this is a beautiful shade to use as a highlight. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed with this one. I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup, and then I will be back to do the lip, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on everything. All right guys, so I just put on some eyeliner and false lashes really quickly. Ardell Delmi Wispy, something really natural. Anyways, we're gonna move on to the Rouge Coco Flesh lipsticks. Now there are four shades that came out and I only picked up one color. I picked up what looked like would be the most neutral. This is the shade Dawn. And this does have a very sheer, shimmery kind of finish. So I'm gonna start off with Pat McGrath Labs Lip Liner in Supernatural. You can see I didn't fill in the lips, but I wanted the color to show for itself. So so again, this is Dawn. You can see very, very sheer, very, very shiny, almost kind of feels like a lip gloss. Mm. That's really, really pretty. Obviously, this is not going to be mask proof. So that actually might be a little bit of a turn off just for the time being. But, oh my gosh, it looks gorgeous with a lip liner though. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna pull out really quickly and then we are gonna talk about my final thoughts on each product. So let's start off with the eyeshadow palettes. Like I said, they are $65 each. And if you are a person who likes really defined, precise makeup, you're not going to like the Chanel formula. Now, I'm not sure if this is reminiscent of of the regular eyeshadow formula in the regular line. But speaking for these, these are gonna give you quick everyday makeup looks that are super easy to do. Again, like I said, something like a cut crease or something really precise and detailed like that. This is not the formula to be successful with that. This is just to blend on a bunch of eyeshadows and for it to look really good and be really seamless. Kind of a foolproof application, definitely a great formula for more mature eyelids. I personally was not in love with Tender. I just feel like to me, $65, this one is not worth it, but because I prefer more of a color story like this for every day, the intense I actually really love. I love how easy it was to create a simple everyday smoky eye, and I'm sure you can get around using other shades to create not a smoky eye, but I feel like this makes a typically harder to create look very, very simple. So for me, while the colors aren't super unique, it creates a look that is harder to create just completely seamlessly, very, very foolproof. So for me, this palette is definitely worth it. I prefer the tones. The pink palette, I mean, it's pretty, it's soft, but I feel like I would prefer a Charlotte Tilbury pinky kind of shadow palette because you get a little bit more of the type of formula that I prefer. Like I'm not a big fan of the pink shimmery shade. It's kind of a little bit messy and I just feel like for $65 and the amount of product that you get, every shade should work seamlessly. So I'm not as in love with the pink one, but definitely am into the intense one. Now that being said, do I think you need to spend $65 on an eyeshadow palette like this? No, I don't think so, but I am mostly a high-end luxury makeup channel, and if you watch my channel, you tend to enjoy packaging and the experience. I recommend, if you're gonna get this, definitely purchase from the Chanel website to get the nice Chanel box, to get the unboxing experience. You have this beautiful classic packaging and beautiful shade. So I really like this one. Let's move on finally to the lipstick. Now I forgot to mention this, but it is $40. I mean, $40 for a little lipstick, that is a lot. I like this, I think it's a very beautiful formula. I would say, you know, if you wear a mask every single day and you have to for work, I don't think this would be worth it, but I think it's a really pretty summer color, very nice to throw throw on a little bit of lip liner, adds a nice gloss, or even a great kind of touch-up formula. So if you put on a liquid lipstick, but you need some hydration, or 
you just need to bring your lips back to life. This is a very easy way to do that, and I love this color. There are brighter colors like a red shade, a coral shade, an orange shade in this collection, but if you tend to like more nude lips like me, I really love this. So maybe not worth buying every single color, but I think this is a very nice formula, and it's very, very trendy. All right, you guys, there we have it. I have explored some items from the Chanel Le Beige collection. Very into it, very beautiful wearable collection. This is probably, I believe, one of their more popular collections every year. They come out with a new Le Beige collection every year, and I mean, I can see why. They're just beautiful wearable colors that perform so easy. So that is all I have for today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.